Good morning and welcome back to day two of Adventures in Project Land. We're here at conference headquarters in San Diego, California. Today we're placing the spotlight on Fallbrook Union Elementary School District. IT Director Kirby Fell is here to share with us Fallbrook's recent escapades in project management on a project that they just wrapped earlier this month. Good morning, Kirby. Good morning. All right, we're gonna start with an easy question. Okay. <laughs> did you eat your Wheaties this morning? I actually did not eat my Wheaties this morning, but I am highly caffeinated and ready to go. <laughs> okay, and we've got plenty of sugar here to keep us yes, going too. Yes, we do, okay. for sure. Awesome. So please tell us a little bit about your district, Fallbrook Union Elementary. How many students and staff do you have? What's your role? And what are the main goals of your IT department? Sure, so uh, Fallbrook is a rural community located in northern San Diego County. We serve about 5,000 students, have a staff of roughly 850 across the district. Uh, I serve as the Director of Technology Services and Support. Uh, and our goals are really centered around uh, just providing excellent customer service to everyone that we serve. Uh, obviously, we want to increase efficiency uh, in whatever way, wherever we can along the way. Uh, and we're also focused on just building and maintaining collaborative relationships with our schools, our departments within the district, and then any outside agencies or vendors that we work with. Uh, we are also focused on just making sure that we provide a safe and secure online experience for all of our users as well. Thank you. Now I know your HR department staff has had some challenges with entering data across multiple systems. Can you please describe for us the problems that they were facing with data and workflow? Sure, uh, so they were actually entering data into three separate systems. Uh, we use PeopleSoft for our HR and payroll management. Uh, we have Infinite Campus as our student and staff information system. And then we also use Frontline for our time and absence tracking. Uh, so obviously this was a very consuming, uh, time consuming process for them and really slowed down that onboarding process for staff. Everything ultimately gets funneled into Infinite Campus and then we use Infinite Campus to then uh, provide access to all of the online campus, uh, all of the online applications that staff will need to have access to. So we really wanted to just make that a more efficient process for everyone involved. Uh, as we started to think about the project, uh, we realized that much of the groundwork was laid already for the integration between PeopleSoft and Frontline. Uh, so we really decided not to include that in the scope of the project and really just focus on that integration between PeopleSoft and Infinite Campus. So your project is called HR Systems Integration, and my team, the SDCOE EPMO, had an opportunity to work alongside with you and your team. I'm curious, why did you want to apply project management methodology at this point in time for this particular endeavor? Well, as we started thinking about the project, uh, we realized we had some challenges uh, that we would have to overcome. Uh, obviously, we would be working uh, with multiple departments within our district. Uh, all of those departments have uh, you know, just limited staff uh, who already have very full plates. So just figuring out how uh, we could squeeze that into everything else that was going on. Uh, we also had a specific time frame that we wanted to complete the project by. Uh, you know, we're just starting our hiring season now, and so we really wanted everything to be in place before uh, we got to that point. Um, we also knew that we needed to just identify who would be involved in the project, what our deliverables would be, uh, and any potential roadblocks that could come up along the way, and just be prepared to address those. Uh, at the same time, we were signing up for EPMO's Project Management Academy, uh, and so we knew that we would be learning some really great tools and project management methodology uh, that we could apply to this project. Awesome. So can you tell us a little bit more? Walk us through your project. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so we started our project. Uh, by conducting a meet and greet uh, meeting. This was a great opportunity for all of the team players on the Fabric side to meet all of the team players on the EPMO side uh, to discuss just on a very high level uh, what our project would look like and to really build excitement around this particular project. From there, we started developing our project charter. Uh, this was a great opportunity for us to, again, just identify all of the team members that would be involved, uh, to really establish what those deliverables would be, uh, to uh, create specific phases uh, throughout our project and to uh, create tasks uh, that would need to occur in each one of those phases. And then also just build out that schedule uh, that I was uh, referring to. Um, we knew we had that specific time frame, and we really wanted to sort of uh, reverse uh, engineer our schedule based on that. 
We also wanted to create a file repository where we're a Google district, and so we, uh, we actually accomplished that through the use of Google Drive. Uh, we wanted to create a structure that was very easy for folks to uh, find information about the project uh, and a place where we could store all of our uh, documents related to the project and make sure that all of our team members had access to that file repository as well. Um, EPMO actually introduced us to a wonderful tool, monday.com, uh, and so we used that uh, to build out our project. Uh, it's a great way for us to keep track of all of the phases of our project, all of the tasks of our project, uh, to be able to assign timelines uh, to each of those components, and also uh, staff members that would re be responsible for taking care of each one of those tasks. Uh, it also has a really great communication tool built into it. Uh, so the entire team was able to receive notifications, uh, maybe when a deadline was approaching uh, or if a particular change had been made in the project, just being able to have that instant notification that, hey, something has changed uh, was really helpful in terms of everybody just keeping track of what was going on with our project. Uh, then we held a wonderful kickoff meeting. This actually happened in July, or sorry, January of 2022. Uh, it was a uh, perfect time for us to share our project plan with all of our stakeholders and again just continue that excitement around this project. We also knew that we wanted to con collect some baseline metrics uh, to help, uh, help guide us through our project. Uh, so we surveyed our site administrators, uh, administrators and asked them a few key questions uh, to really gather that baseline data uh, that supported the need for this project and also helped us fine tune our deliverables throughout the project. Uh, from there, the work actually began. So we used uh, PeopleSoft's Data for Districts tool, uh, which helped us create two extracts, uh, one for our demographic information and one for our assignment information for our staff. Uh, those uh, extracts uh, were then set up on a scheduled uh, basis uh, that occurs uh, at 11 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, those files actually get placed onto one of SDCOE's ST SFTP servers. Uh, I will admit I knew this much about PeopleSoft going <laughs> into the project. Uh, so this was a wonderful opportunity for me to uh, just expand my knowledge of that system and be able to support other users in our district who, uh, who use PeopleSoft. Uh, from there, we actually moved into uh, our phase where uh, Infinite Campus uh, would be uh, taking those two files that were created and placed on the SFTP server, uh, analyzing all of the data that uh, was contained in those two files and comparing that to the data that was currently in Infinite Campus, and then ultimately importing any changes into our SIS. Uh, the initial testing was done uh, on our Infinite Campus sandbox or our test server, uh, so that was a really great opportunity for us to just really fine tune the process before we actually moved into production. We realized along the way that we had some data cleanup tasks that we also needed to uh, take care of. While we had job titles and location information in both of those systems, it looked slightly different. And so we had to create a mapping file uh, that our SIS uh, vendor would use to make sure that the data was getting uh, populated correctly on the Infinite Campus side of things. Uh, we realized that our race and ethnicity data looked a, a little different in both systems uh, and was actually more uh, complete on the Infinite Campus side. Uh, so we used PeopleSoft's Excel to CI tool to basically take that data from Infinite Campus, import it into PeopleSoft to make sure that it matched in both systems. Uh, we were not collecting highest ed level in PeopleSoft. Uh, we had always stored that information in Infinite Campus. And since we wanted PeopleSoft to really be our one point of entry for data, uh, we needed to make sure that that information was also in PeopleSoft uh, for our certificated staff. Uh, from there, we developed a testing plan. Uh, we decided that we wanted to create or conduct three rounds of testing. Uh, we also created test scripts that would really help us keep track of the information that was changing on the PeopleSoft side and then be able to look into uh, 
in Infinite Campus to make sure that those changes were reflected uh, correctly after each round of testing. Uh, we also uh, established who would be responsible for the testing. Uh, we had someone on the HR side and also the IT side uh, just verifying that, that data was uh, accurate in Infinite Campus after the import process occurred. Another important uh, piece to our project uh, is our bi-weekly status meetings. Uh, we really wanted to uh, make sure we provided opportunities along the way to bring our entire team together uh, to provide updates on where we were with the project, to address any challenges that may have come up with the project, and to just make sure that everyone was uh, well informed of where we were. Alongside of that, uh, we also created bi-weekly status reports. Uh, this was a wonderful opportunity for us to uh, keep all of our stakeholders informed of our progress on the project. Uh, occasionally, we would have a team member that would not be able to attend one of our bi-weekly status meetings. Uh, so it, this was a great opportunity for them to uh, look back and just get caught up on everything that we discussed during our uh, status meeting. Once we completed our testing phase, uh, we came together for sort of a final go, no, go meeting uh, to really take a look at all of our testing results uh, and make sure that everybody was comfortable actually moving the process into production. And at that point, we decided we were ready to go live. Uh, so after we went live, uh, we knew that we wanted to monitor things on the production side just to make sure that those nightly imports were functioning correctly and that all of the data being imported uh, looked accurate on the production side as well. Uh, from there, we really uh, sat down and kind of talked about our lessons learned. Um, we wanted to really focus on three uh, key areas, uh, what went well, where could we have improved, and what were we proud of? Uh, so uh, one of the things that kind of falls under the what went well category, uh, I just want to give a huge shout out to the uh, PeopleSoft support team uh, at SDCOE. Uh, Perry hooked us up with the right folks when we needed them, and uh, they just took care of us in such an efficient and timely manner, uh, really helping us move our project forward. Uh, kind of a, an aha moment for me or something that I learned uh, and an area that we can improve upon, uh, I didn't engage our sys vendor right away in the process. Uh, I kind of made an assumption that they would be able to uh, take care of their portion of the process during the time frame that we had allotted. Uh, once, we uh, once we reached that phase, uh, I realized that they had some other uh, projects they were working on, uh, some other things that uh, delayed our, our, our project slightly. Uh, and I'm most proud of the fact that we successfully accomplished this project and just all of the uh, knowledge that I learned personally about PeopleSoft as well. Uh, we'll definitely use all of this information to drive future projects in our district. We wanted to put together a final report. Uh, so this is actually a slide from our initial kickoff meeting where we established all of the uh, things that we would need to accomplish throughout our project. So we just went back through and checked off uh, each item. Uh, you'll notice that pre and post metrics actually has a yellow check mark instead of a green check mark. Uh, we accomplished that pre uh, metrics piece, uh, but we just wrapped up our project a couple of weeks ago. So we're giving a little bit of time for everything to settle in and then we'll take care of that post metrics phase. And we also wanted to celebrate our accomplishments. This was a really important part of our project. Uh, we were able to actually uh, have an in-person celebration. Uh, Perry and Andrew from the EPMO team uh, actually joined us in Fallbrook, and it was just a really uh, wonderful opportunity for us to acknowledge all of the hard work of our entire team. We also wanted to uh, just get a final sign off on the project. I had a really wonderful conversation with our assistant superintendent of human resources, uh, where he just thanked the entire team uh, for making this project a success and uh, just shared with me what a positive impact it will have on his staff. That's a really amazing story. Congratulations you. to you and your team on such a successful project. Thanks. I'd like to invite everyone watching right now to think about any questions that you might have for Kirby for our Q&A coming up soon. And you can go ahead and start putting those into the chat. Um, but before our Q&A, Kirby, I've got one more question for you. Sure. What were your takeaways from the experience overall? What, what 
what really stands out to you? Uh, so I think definitely uh, all of the things that we learned about project management, um, you know, building that project charter and just making sure that we had a very well-defined um, project schedule uh, that we built in some extra time for those uh, unforeseen things. Um, you know, I, I think with any project, you're going to have things that come up along the way uh, that you just have to be prepared for. And so being able to build in extra time to deal with those uh, was a huge benefit. Um, we decided as a district that we wanted to adopt monday.com uh, in sharing our story about this project with uh, my fellow directors uh, everyone was just really excited about uh, having a tool in place to more effectively manage projects uh, so we did sign up for monday.com uh, we held an initial training with all of our directors uh, and we certainly want to ensure our success in using all of these tools moving forward so we will continue to provide some additional training opportunities uh, and the IT department will certainly be here to support our entire team as we continue our project management journey. Uh, in uh, Fallbrook, we are a leader in me district. Um, we use the uh, seven habits of highly effective people uh, to really help drive uh, everything that we do in Fallbrook. And I won't touch on all of these points, uh, but I wanted to just highlight a few of the habits and talk about how they really tie into uh, project management. Uh, so we'll start with number one, um, be proactive, not reactive. Uh, really investing that time up front to ensure the success of your project. Uh, anticipating those roadblocks and just making sure that you have a plan in place to address those. Uh, number two, beginning with the end in mind. Uh, this was actually highlighted in one of the sessions uh, yesterday. Uh, it's really nice to uh, just think about what it is that we want to accomplish through the project up front. Uh, and when is, our, when is our deadline? When does it need to be completed by? And really use that information to sort of reverse plan the project. Uh, number four, think win-win. Uh, how will the project benefit all stakeholders and key players? And then uh, lastly, I'll just highlight number six, uh, Synergize. Uh, it's really a great opportunity for all of the departments involved to collaborate together, uh, being able to assign tasks to individuals uh, really gives them ownership in the process and just helps uh, sort of create a unified approach to accomplishing the project. We also uh, talked or thought a lot about uh, cross-departmental collaboration as well. Um, you know, we had our business office, uh, our HR department, and our IT department all involved in this project working together. Uh, this was not just an HR project. This was a district project, and so we really wanted to uh, enter into the project with that in mind. Um, also, just understanding the um, unique roles of each department and how the data impacts each of the, the departments. Uh, and again, just connecting those silos. Sometimes it's easy for us to just sort of work in our own little bubble, our own little department, and uh, not necessarily think about how our work uh, impacts other departments. Uh, we also looked a lot at organizational change management uh, through this process. Um, you know, projects really are planned organizational change. And if you look at all of the, uh, all of the points on the graphic there, uh, these were all things that, you know, we hoped we would be able to accomplish uh, through this project. Uh, I'll just highlight a few, you know, increasing employee satisfaction, improved productivity, uh, greater efficiency. Uh, and it really makes sense to think of project managers and team members as those change agents. Right, I think that's uh, those are my takeaways. That's an awesome set of outcomes, Kirby. And I really liked hearing about how you're thinking about the significance of collaboration for your project and the organizational change management. Um, that is really huge because almost every project we do has some sort of change component. Absolutely. Uh, so that, that was wonderful. Uh, we're going to turn to the pool of questions that we've okay. got. Some Sounds have been good. coming into the chat. Great. And uh, I'll pose them to you and okay. we'll just see how many we can get through, okay? Great. Sounds good. Okay. So one of our first questions is a little bit around the scope and it's why did you not combine all of your projects into one? I know you had mentioned that you had this frontline integration and then we have this separate project with our infinite campus integration. Sure. Well, how did you determine the scope? Sure. Uh, so, you know, we, we looked at that frontline and PeopleSoft integration. Uh, that's actually something that was working uh, a few years back. 
uh, we actually made the shift from hosting Infinite Campus uh, locally in our district to uh, moving over to their cloud-based option. And so it was at that point uh, that things kind of broke down. Uh, we realized uh, that was a, a pretty easy fix and uh, not something that we really needed to include uh, in the scope of this uh, particular project. Uh, so we kind of set that one aside thinking, okay, that's an easy one to take care of uh, and really just focused in on uh, being able to, you know, create that integration between PeopleSoft and Infinite Campus. Uh, we had a, a wonderful developer already lined up to work with uh, through Infinite Campus, so we really wanted to just narrow the scope and make sure that we could accomplish it in the time frame that we had set. Uh, set aside. Great. So on your project chart, are you listed what's in scope and what's out of scope? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Love to hear that. All right. This next question was around um, the status meetings and the status reports and the cadence of them. The question is why bi-weekly instead of weekly? Sure. Um, you know, we, we kind of looked at uh, everyone's schedules and just everything that uh, you know was was on our plates, our to-do list. Uh, we decided that um, you know we probably didn't need to meet on a weekly be basis. Bi-weekly would probably be sufficient for us. Also, using a tool like Monday.com that has all of these wonderful built-in communication components to it, um, you know, we were we were able to make sure that folks were getting notifications of anything that changed in our project. Um, so we felt like bi-weekly was the best fit for us. Great. Uh, this question is about uh, your project. So the first question is, it's a two-part. What was the name of your project, and would you change it if you had to do it over? And I think sure. it means, would you change the name if you had to do it over? That's the way I'm, I'm interpreting sure. it. Sure. Uh, so we just referred to it as our HR Sys integration project. Um, I don't. I don't know that I would necessarily change the name. I think it, it rolls right off much, the tongue, right? Yeah, it pretty <laughs> much sums up exactly what we were trying to accomplish. Great. Um, this is a question about the vendor or okay. providers. How did your assumptions change regarding hardware software providers based on this project? Uh, I, I think you know. Again, I made the assumption that um, you know that those folks would be there. Uh, ready to help us during the time frame that we had allotted and and just you know neglected to think about the fact that they may have other things on on their plate as well so uh, one of the aha moments for me was just making sure that you know we are including literally everyone involved in the project from the get-go so they're part of the planning phase and setting the schedule uh, you know and obviously they would have an opportunity at that point to say you know we have a national conference that's occurring during the time frame that you want us to work on your project so maybe we need to adjust uh, our timeline a little bit to accommodate mm -hmm. for that great this is a question about integrating monday.com the project plan with a, with a ticket system. So the question is, were you able to or did you integrate your monday.com project plan with a ticket system? Uh, we did not. Um, we have a ticketing system uh, that actually works very well uh, in our district. Um, everybody uh, is familiar with how to use it um, and it really is an efficient uh, option for us. Uh, one of the things that we have talked about though is uh, occasionally we will get um, requests for projects either from school sites or from other departments. And so we've talked about using Monday.com to uh, really be a creation point for that request coming in. Uh, and then we can evaluate uh, who needs to be involved in the project, if it's something that we accompl can accomplish, uh, and really uh, use that process to develop what it will look like in Monday.com. Great. This is a question about testing. Okay. Which system or programming language did you use for testing? Uh, so, you know, testing, um, we, we kind of use both systems, Infinite Campus and, uh, and PeopleSoft. Uh, it was a bit of a manual process in that uh, we were tracking the changes uh, that uh, HR um, was uh, inputting into PeopleSoft, we were tracking those uh, actually just using a spreadsheet uh, and just keeping track of the employees and what information had changed for the employees. Uh, and then once we knew that that nightly process uh, had been completed, the next day we would go into Infinite Campus and just look to make sure that those changes uh, actually showed up. Uh, we also did some spot checking along the way, just going into Infinite Campus, uh, you know, checking employees to, uh, if we knew that someone had an assignment change or, you know, maybe an address change or something like that, just going back into Infinite Campus to see if those changes were actually reflected. Wonderful. 
Okay, if an organization is intimidated by trying to implement everything in the EPMO project management toolkit, would you say if we wanted to start small, start with a charter and project plan, or would it be other components like status reports, lessons learned, celebration, and as the must do's? Sure, you know, I, I definitely recommend starting out small and continuing to build from there. Uh, you know, start with what you're comfortable with. I think that project charter is a critical piece. Um, it really just helps set the tone for your project, identifying who will be involved, what are your deliverables. Uh, you know, one of the things that we talked about a little bit uh, yesterday is that scope creep um, and making sure that, you know, it's very easy as we're, you know, <laughs> tearing down walls and running new cabling or whatever it might be to say, oh, well, while we're at it, let's do, you know, let's do this. Um, so having that project charter in place uh, that clearly identifies, okay, this is the work to be accomplished. Uh, oftentimes there's a budget set with that as well. And so if you're continuing to add additional uh, things, uh, you know, that might increase your budget or extend your overall timeline. Uh, so definitely start with the project charter. Um, you know, I think one of the things that was a huge benefit for us was also making the investment in uh, a good project management tool. Uh, it really uh, helps us just be much more efficient along the way. Um, you know, those status report meetings, I think those are really, really important. And again, you can adjust those depending on what works best for your team, but really being able to bring that team together on a regular basis just to talk about what's happening with the project, uh, address any roadblocks. Um, I, I, I think that's just a, a, a very valuable piece of the, of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Great. Was there anything that came up during testing that you did not expect? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, so one of the things um, we, we were looking at the way that addresses were stored in, in the two systems. Um, and so uh, in PeopleSoft, uh, you pretty much just have one field that encompasses, you know, the, the, house, the house number, the street address, if it's a lane drive, uh, whatnot. Um, we realized that uh, that data is actually stored in separate fields in Infinite Campus. Uh, and so that was something that, you know, I, I just really didn't an anticipate. Uh, and when I realized that, I didn't think it would uh, be that big of a deal to accomplish. Uh, but it was actually uh, fairly complex on the Infinite Campus side, being able to break down that address and make sure that, uh, you know, all of the pieces of data were uh, getting populated into the right fields. This is a comment, so it's not a question, but okay. maybe you want to respond to the comment. Sure. It's sad that we as LEAs have to create projects of this scope for integration like this because vendors don't have integration tools. Uh, <laughs> I would say I have to agree. Um, you know, I, I, I do understand it though. I think all vendors are hyper-focused on making sure that their systems are secure, uh, and that their data is protected against cyber attacks. Uh, so I think any time that you uh, open it up through an API or through some other means uh, to be able to uh, bring data into your system, often in an automated fashion, uh, without you know eyes on the process constantly, uh, you know you do risk um, being able to or, or being vulnerable to to a cyber attack. Uh, so I get that piece, but at the same time. Um, you know, it, it, it is frustrating uh, for LEAs to uh, realize that, okay, we, we have all of these systems in place. Why can't they just talk to each other? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, this next question is around your systems in particular. Are you now using your SIS as the hub for identity management? And if so, how are you handling new hires who need access to services such as AD, G Suite, or the SIS prior to their start date? Uh, sure. So, yeah, we are using that uh, as kind of our hub. We do have an automated process in place. Uh, so once the staff is entered into Infinite Campus, uh, you know, that process kicks in around midnight uh, each night. And then all of the accounts are created, the AD account, uh, the G Suite account, G Suite account uh, Clever. It's all really tied to Infinite Campus. Um, you know, we do have those one-off situations where, uh, you know, a staff member is hired and they need access to systems earlier. And so we really just handle that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, it does, uh, you know, it does have an impact on the automated system if the automated system runs and it sees that there is an account created already. And so that's a bit of a manual process for us just to go in and tag that account. 
uh, so that the automated process knows that, hey, it's, it's already been created, it already exists. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a PeopleSoft question. As data is imported from PeopleSoft into Infinite Campus, are you establishing a district employment or are you creating records down to the district assignments level as required for CalPADS? There's more, you want me to stop there? Uh, no, go ahead, I'll see if I can <laughs> remember it all. <laughs> if at the district mm -hmm. assignments level, how are you handling mm -hmm. the differences between PeopleSoft and the actual practice at schools? Yeah, um, so you know that was kind of a complex um, process for us to work through. Um, you know, the the employee ID piece that all gets created in PeopleSoft, uh, and then that's actually brought into Infinite Campus as as the employee ID. Um, the assignment uh, the assignments piece uh, did get a little tricky in that you know the assignment may look different in PeopleSoft. Uh, versus Infinite Campus. Uh, so again, we spent a lot of time just kind of creating that uh, mapping logic uh, so that as that information is being imported into Infinite Campus, we're, you know, we're trying to ensure that those staff members get the correct assignment and it's assigned at the correct site. Um, in particular, we were looking at our folks uh, that work in our transportation department and our child nutrition nutrition services department, and they were not necessarily assigned to a uh, site location in PeopleSoft. Uh, and part of our, our process too, um, that I, I don't think I've mentioned yet, um, you know, we did have a bit of a change process in terms of how we are entering data into mm -hmm. PeopleSoft and keeping data into in PeopleSoft. Uh, and so that was a part of, uh, you know, uh, the process that we went through is just establishing okay, how does it look different now and what, what information do we need to make sure is being entered into PeopleSoft in a way that matches or uh, kind of uh, lines up with how it looks in Infinite Campus. So there was a business process change. Yes. So how did you ensure that everyone in HR knew exactly what they needed to do in the new way of, of work? So that was all uh, part of our biweekly meetings um, and definitely as we were kind of uh, reaching that closure phase and uh, really talking about um, you know how how has the process changed? How does it look different now? Uh, we made sure that uh, everyone uh, understood that okay, the information now needs to be entered this way into PeopleSoft, or it's something that we were never entering in PeopleSoft before, but now that is our our point of entry. Uh, we also created a change process document as well, so you know that's a, a document that we'll have that we can go back and reference if ever you know someone's. Uh, not sure, okay, do I, do I need to enter this information into PeopleSoft and how does it need to look? I think that's a good example of the project because at the beginning we didn't anticipate how many or we didn't know which pieces would change and then as we're working right. through the project and discussing it, there were these little bits and pieces where we said, oh, okay, now we're going to start to go put this information in this field or sure. you know the, the change. But I really like how you had that idea to create this one list so in the very end of the project it's the final. This is what this is the new way to do it, and it was very clear. And I imagine that really helped your HR teams with knowing uh, how to proceed after go live. Absolutely. Uh, so this is a question, a, a comment actually. Uh, it says, "Hearing Kirby saying he knew very little of PeopleSoft in the beginning is great to hear. That with the PM tool or process, it takes you along." So just to to add on to that, what was that like for you to have to completely learn PeopleSoft, uh, which you really hadn't gone into? But moreover, learn probably one of the harder parts of PeopleSoft, which is PeopleSoft <laughs> Query Manager, to build sure. pretty sophisticated queries. Who did you talk to to learn about it? Um, how much time did it take if you're willing to tell us? And, sure. and what was it like in general for you? Yeah, um, you know, um, call me crazy, but I love a good challenge. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, that's part of it. Um, you know, uh, I've been uh, in Fallbrook for uh, about two years now, uh, and I had never uh, worked in, in quite a few districts over the last 20 years, but uh, had never uh, experienced working with PeopleSoft before. Uh, and so it was a curiosity that I had all along. Uh, and occasionally, uh, you know, I would be in a conversation with someone working in our HR department or our business uh, services department, and they would talk about PeopleSoft. And so uh, I wanted to broaden my knowledge uh, of PeopleSoft. Um, so I really enjoyed that challenge. Um, again, worked with you know multiple folks uh, on this PeopleSoft support team who really 
uh, were my guiding force in terms of, of you know, figuring things out. Um, I know you have a lot of experience working with PeopleSoft, and so there were many times that you know, I would call you up or send you a text saying, okay, I, I need to accomplish this, you know, how do I go about it? Um, and so I really appreciate your guidance and help along the way as well. Um, in terms of time, you know, I don't know that I can really uh, put a, a number on that. Um, it was definitely something that, uh, you know, I just worked on along the way as needed. Um, I really enjoyed the process of, of, you know, being able to figure out how to put a query together. Uh, we also, um, you know, worked with a, a colleague, colleague in a neighboring district who had gone through the process, knew it very, very well. Uh, he shared some of his queries with me, which was a great starting point for me to just, you know, kind of wrap my head around, okay, what data do we need to pull out? Where is it stored in PeopleSoft and be able to build that query? Uh, I will say, you know, it, it was not a, a one and done process. Um, you know, there were many uh, variations of my queries along the way. Uh, definitely as I, you know, as I got more into it and, and learned more about PeopleSoft, uh, you know, I started to to discover ways or figure out ways that we could pull the data uh, and manipulate the data so that once it was in that file and ready for Infinite Campus to pick up, the data resembled what it should look like in Infinite Campus as much as possible. Wonderful. I'm, I'm thinking about our PeopleSoft districts here in San Diego County, and this would be a really great tool for lots of districts to take advantage of. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it was a wonderful process to go through, and again, uh, when we just think about the impact that it's had on our human resources staff, uh, really, uh, you know, taking uh, three systems that they need to enter data into and, you know, narrowing that down to just one and then having that automated process uh, take care of the rest, uh, rest, it's just been a huge time saver for our department. Um, we've got a question about building in time for your, your project. So you talked about building an extra time for certain tasks in this project. Did you end up taking more time than anticipated on certain things? And were you glad that you built in that contingency? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, um, we did. Um, you know, as we, as we entered into that testing phase uh, and again started uh, just looking at how data was stored in both of those systems and realizing that, uh, okay, we need to do uh, you know, some additional man manipulation of the data so that it uh, lines up correctly with how it needs to be imported into Infinite Campus. Um, that additional time was uh, was <laughs> a huge benefit that we had already, you know, kind of planned for that. Um, we also had some staffing changes along the way. We had some restructuring that occurred in our human resources department. Uh, a member of uh, my team, uh, had a baby and went out on maternity leave. Uh, she was a key player on our team as well. And so again, having that buffer really helped us uh, just adjust and, and um, you know, accommodate for those things that uh, ran a little longer than scheduled. Mm -hmm. So Kirby's pro tip is to pad the schedule. Pad the schedule, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And I would say, you know, if you, can, if you can build in padding to each phase, that really helps. Um, because then that way, if one phase does run a little long, you're not having to adjust your, your timeline for the next phase. You've got that buffer built into that phase already. And hey, if you can accomplish everything without needing that extra time, then it's just going to put you that much further ahead on your schedule. Great. So a couple of questions around Monday.com. How many projects has your district started or completed using Monday.com, and have you trained your IT members? Uh, yes, um, so we, uh, I mentioned earlier, we did uh, an initial training um, actually with our department directors and then uh, we are, the IT department, we are using uh, Monday.com to, to manage several projects right now. Uh, in terms of how many projects we've successfully completed, it's really the, the, the one project where we, where we started and were introduced to Monday.com, uh, but we have several ongoing projects right now. Uh, we have an uh, outdoor access point project that we're working on. Uh, we're also going through multi-factor authentication right now as well, uh, and so we've been using Monday.com to build out our phases for that project and to manage each of those phases. Uh, another great benefit that we found uh, in using Monday.com, we have a lot of um, 
just annual things that need to occur. Uh, a lot of those are centered around uh, data requirements. So CalPADS, civil rights data collection. Um, and so we've used monday.com to build out uh, an annual schedule for all of those events. Uh, it also has a really great calendar view option. So even though you may have your project management view, you can kind of flip over to this calendar view and it shows you an entire calendar for the year and the blocks of time for each of those projects. Um, so that's been really beneficial for us. Uh, again, just being able to lay everything out and have that visual of, okay, what does the year look like and when do we have all of these you know, data submission cycles that we need to just be aware of and make sure that we're uh, putting in you know, due dates and timelines um, and just you know, keeping track of those and being prepared for those as the year progresses. Do you create a new board for every project or do you have one board for all of your projects? Uh, we actually create a new board for each project. Um, we we kind of broke it down so that each department has their own uh, area in monday.com uh, and they can create as many you know boards uh, underneath uh, their area as possible. So yeah, we have a separate board uh, for each one of our projects that we have curr going currently. You're going to love this one. By the way, everyone, Kirby fell is knocking it out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I'd just throw that one in there to let you know how you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, a couple more questions. We've got sure. a few minutes left here. Then there's actually more questions than we'll have time for, so maybe okay. we can uh, consider how we can document Absolutely. them and get them back out Definitely. to everyone. Um, when creating your projects in, proje in the project management tool, do you give each project its own... Oh, sorry, I, that's a duplicate. Next no that one. Um, what's the roadmap for the implementation of the project management process at Fallbrook? Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, we had an initial training uh, with Monday.com uh, where we just you know, talked very high level about uh, how to build out your projects in Monday.com and some of the tools that, uh, that are available in Monday.com. But uh, I am also realizing that with any new system, there is a learning curve. Uh, and so uh, we are planning to uh, uh, conduct another uh, training, a little bit more in-depth training uh, to make sure that everyone is comfortable with Monday.com. Uh, I would love to have each one of the departments uh, identify a current project or a project that will be occurring in the near future uh, and really uh, have that be a focus area for them to build that out in Monday.com and just be comfortable, you know, get comfortable with all of the uh, components of that. Uh, obviously, just continuing to circle back around with all of the things that we've learned uh, through uh, working with the EPMO um, to make sure that you know staff are comfortable using all of those tools as well. Uh, and again, just continuing to support staff as they move forward in this process, uh, and as you know needs come up or or things that uh, uh, they uh, are wondering about, could we accomplish this in Monday.com? Uh, really taking a look at that to to see if there's a way that we can make it work. There are so many questions about Monday.com. It's really <laughs> interesting. I think we've piqued people's curiosity. Um, this is one an interesting one. If you if you had a decision between using uh, Sheets or Excel mm -hmm. that everyone's familiar with, or Monday.com, which is brand new, mm -hmm. which way would you go? I I would go the route of Monday.com, uh, and and I'll give you a few reasons why. Um, we did you know we looked at at Monday.com uh, obviously. Uh, there's a cost for that service, um, but we also realized that you know maybe not everyone in our district needs access to Monday.com. So uh, we kind of started out small. Uh, we purchased 50 user licenses, which we felt uh, would be sufficient for all of the uh, departments and members of each department uh, to have access to Monday.com. Uh, the other thing uh, that I like about Monday.com, and I'm by no means an expert on Monday.com. I'm still learning myself, but uh, they do um, have it set up so uh, if you have outside vendors that need access to a project board, uh, they can have the access to the project board free of charge so that doesn't take up one of your licenses. Uh, but um, I really found that the communication piece that's built into Monday.com is so powerful. That's why I would really uh, choose that option over using you know, Sheets or Excel. Uh, because it does uh, provide that just that 
instant um, look into what's happening with the project. Uh, they have a wonderful mobile app as well that I have downloaded on my cell phone. Uh, so anytime anything changes uh, with a project that I'm associated with, I immediately get notification that you know someone has gone in and entered a note uh, for a particular task, uh, which is also a nice feature. You can go in and add notes. Um, so it really gives you that one-stop shop to uh, find out everything uh, that's happening with your project and those infinite notifications to me that's that's just priceless that's wonderful so we heard today about kirby's amazing project that he's just wrapped up uh, he reduced data entry he and his teams reduced data entry across multiple systems were able to automate the exchange of data they've increased efficiency so we've got new staff getting access to the things that they need sooner we've simplified the onboarding process um, all the while, while using and adopting project management methodology that they can take forward to the next project. So Kirby, big thanks to you for sharing today. It was wonderful to Absolutely. chat with you. Yes, and again, thank you to your, you and your entire uh, team for all of the support along the way. I mean, we, we learned so much and uh, you were all there to support us every step of the way. And so I just appreciate that so much. On behalf of the team, it was truly our pleasure. It was a great project. We had a lot of fun. Likewise. And we loved your pizza socks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lots of lots of colorful socks. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you. Hope you have a wonderful day today at the conference. Thanks so much, everyone.